Hello, my name is Tim Barrage. A uh, one of my subscribers on YouTube uh, recently kind of requested, I guess, um, uh, needed a video tutorial on undistorting fish eye footage for motion tracking in Blender. Um, and it's a great idea uh, because Blender's motion tracking tool does have the uh, capability to do this. So um, I thought I'd make it and upload it. Uh, so let's start out. We're in Blender. I'm just going to go ahead and delete the cube and the light. I'll leave the camera. I don't really need anything. Um, focusing mostly on motion tracking. Uh, just going to the motion tracking panel. I'm going to load in my footage. Um, there's two ways you can do this. You can track it in, uh, sorry, you can understore it in Blender or you can understore it in After Effects. After Effects has a, I think it's called Optics Compensation Effect under, under you go Effects Distort Optics Compensation. Um, that'll uh, understore fisheye footage quite nicely. Uh, or you could do it in Nuke. Uh, that has a undistortion thing, but I'll be doing it in uh, Blender for this tutorial. So now we have our footage. Um, I shot it on a 8mm uh, fisheye lens on a Nikon D7000, um, which is a crop sensor. I'm just going to go and set, uh, click the button set scene frames. This changes the, the render settings from uh, to match the length of the video. So now just like scrubbing through, we have um, our video footage. Uh, you can see that like the tree here on the left is like really warped, especially um, the closer it gets to the edge of the, uh, the video footage, the frame. Um, we'll be using this uh, in order to um, accurately undistort the video footage. Uh, so I'm just going to scrub forward until I have uh, a nice straight tree that's on the edge of the frame. Um, we can see here in frame 45 we have one on the left and we might be able to use one on the right as well. Uh, okay, cool. So I'm going to go to the crease pencil tab and on the right here I'm going to go... I'm going to enable grid. Uh, just so I can see what's being, uh, when you play with the distortion values, this changes. I'm going to uh, go to camera. I'm going to uh, change the camera sensor size to my Nikon, which is Nikon DX. Um, I'm going to change the focal length to 8 millimeters. We have our lens distortion box here uh, with 3K values. Um, they're all at zero at the moment, but we'll be changing those soon. And um, yeah, we've got it all set up nicely. So I'm just going to draw a, I'm going to click under grease pencil, I'm going to click poly. I'm going to draw a poly on the right side of this tree from the base all the way up to the top. Now what happens, see how it's pink, uh, what happens when you uh, input undistortion values? Um, it will warp, uh, not the video footage, it'll warp the um, this line here to match uh, the video footage. Um, and that's how you get your, your undistortion values. So I'm going to do it again here on this tree. Uh, I'm only going to do it on two trees for this uh, tutorial but you can do it on as many as you want so now it's just uh, playing around with these uh, K values I'm gonna go ahead and um, slide the first one see if you go into the positive K value it's distorting the wrong way uh, so I'll go negative that seems to match um, see how it's matching on our poly uh, on our line up here, but it seems to be warping the other one. Um, so maybe play around with the second K value and the third a bit. They all do, uh, let's just see what they do. So I'll just reset them all to zero. Uh, okay, so K1 just seems to 
warp the footage. Uh, okay. Put it back to zero. K2 seems to do a similar warping as um, K1. And what does K3 do? K3 is slightly different. It seems to be more uh, horizontal, I guess. See, if we live at K3 at a value of negative 0.04, the line up here on the right seems to match really, really well, but the line here on the left doesn't seem to match at all. So really, uh, as far as I've done it, um, it's just kind of like guess and check. Uh, you just kind of like play around and see if you can get um, a line to match. which can be problematic. The, um, the lines don't have to match exactly, but it does help a lot if you have um, more accurate uh, distortion values. Um, I might just change that a little bit. You can always hold down when you're editing values, you can hold down shift for like a slightly uh, smoother um, edit. I'm just going to, for the purpose of the video, I'm just going to leave it there. Uh, so now that we have the um, values there, let's try checking the uh, render undistorted button. And as you can see, it does undistort it bit there. It doesn't seem to do it all the way though. Um, if you're going to be rendering the video footage out, I would go into uh, compositing, click use nodes, um, add an input movie clip, select your movie clip, uh, maybe a distort scale if you're not going to be rendering out at its, at its um, uh, native resolution which is 1920 by 1080 for me. Um, then add a distort movie distortion, uh, open up the video file and then go undistort, connect all those nodes. Uh, I'm not going to be rendering any CGI. So let's just try rendering out a single frame of that. And uh, see it has undistorted it a little bit. If I click backdrop and then shift control that we have our undistorted and then we have our distorted and it's only like a slight change. So let's go back to uh, motion tracking and let's try, I'll turn off grid. We don't need to see that at the moment. Let's try playing with some more K values just to really straighten everything out a bit more. Right now I'm just kind of like doing it off eye and I'm not paying too much attention to um, the Polylines, I'll probably just erase those if I can. No, it won't let me. Um, you do have to be on the same frame that you drew them. Uh, it doesn't really matter at the moment. Uh, so just kind of play around with these K values. It helps if you're shooting a, uh, like if you shoot a reference frame of like a, um, I think. Uh, you mentioned this a like a black and white uh, checkerboard or something with lots of uh, straight lines running up and down um, the page or something uh, because that means you can line it up and you can see any warping in something that's meant to be straight like these trees I can see that meant to be straight but they're um, still warping uh, if you do this in, a, in another program like um, Nuke it does have like an automatic undistortion function that will like analyze your video footage. Um, that can be helpful. See, uh, if we look at the tree on the left here, uh, it is somewhat uh, straight, but then the ones in the center here still seem um, 
quite distorted. The only problem with undistorting fisheye video footage is that you lose because you're kind of like stretching the footage. You're uh, losing a lot of quality on the on the edges here. Um, so you might need to end up uh, when you're finish, finished rendering your CGI, re-correcting, like uh, re-distorting the renders, or um, or uh, just cropping the video footage. So how straight are these trees? Let's try more K1 value. I'll um, hide my won't seem to let me. I'm just trying to hide my crease pencil. Oh yeah, there we go. Erase. Cool. Um, the footage is really kind of warped here. How about we decrease K1, leave that at zero, and then just play with K2. Uh, one thing uh, that I should mention is you can either, when you're uh, finished undistorting, you can either like go ahead and, and track, um, or as I would probably recommend, render that undistorted fisheye video footage out as a um, like a PNG sequence, and then make a new file and load that into uh, Blender and just track it as you would with like a normal lens. Um, if you are like tracking straight uh, from the uh, distorted video footage and undistorting in Blender, it might uh, I don't you might end up coming into a, like a few conflictions with um the solver and uh, the undistortion features uh, but uh, just to be safe I would probably uh, kind of um, just you know export it as a as a new sequence uh, so that you're kind of circumventing those problems uh, okay let's try k3 Wow, that's interesting. So I'm just trying out all the uh, different K values for undistortion. K1 seems to be the best so far um, to straighten it out. However, we still get quite a bit of uh, problems as far as um, losing losing a like a image on the side here that's not too bad uh, don't forget like um, for me some of these trees might be straight and some of them might be slightly curved or something um, but if you're shooting like a, a building or something, most uh, most walls should be exactly uh, straight and parallel and whatnot. Yeah, so I'd say that's good enough. Um, you can always like play around with it a bit more. Um, I would probably recommend doing this in After Effects as the um, optic compensation seems to do a slightly better job at undistorting the video footage it doesn't seem to um, do that weird warping thing around the edges it just kind of like scales it out a bit so you might lose a bit of resolution but that's about it uh, when you're done with that you can um, like I said export it as a image sequence by uh, see how I set up the compositor with the movie clip to the scale to the undistortion node and then straight to the composite then just set up your render settings uh, like output um, format whatnot and just render that out or you can uh, go ahead and motion track it uh, just using this video footage because like if I go back to the tracking settings um, it will uh, you'll be able to track um, the scene 
I do recommend only tracking, try to track things like features uh, closer to the center of the frame uh, because we do get quite a bit of warping on the left and the right at the extremes so uh, you might get a, like a higher error value there uh, so just try to track features around the center of your footage um, for that fisheye video on YouTube that I uploaded quite a while ago that's uh, most of my tracking positions uh, tracking points were in the center of the video footage um, so that kind of helped me get a, a lower error value I've been tracking this video footage uh, I think I ended up getting an error value of 0.6 if I just go to the motion tracking tab. Um, I did uh, correct this video footage. Um, as you can see here on the left, I'll make this bigger. Uh, the video footage is like distorted um, in that it loses a bit of quality towards the left and the right. Uh, but most of the trees are somewhat um, straight. So if I like scrub through, uh, there's not too much warping going on. And as you can see, most of my tracking points are um, are in the center of the frame. Yeah. Uh, so I guess um, one of the things to remember is uh, if you want to preserve that uh, like fisheye look. Um, Redistort your video footage after. Uh, Redistort your your CGI rendering after uh, to match, and then replace the background with the um, replace the undistorted uh, fisheye plate with the uh, the original plate, um, and that way you kind of preserve the uh, fisheye style, like fisheye look. Um, I wouldn't recommend shooting. Uh, a fisheye just to undistort it and then use that you do get like super wide footage but you lose a lot of quality on the um, on the extremes of the frame particularly the left and the right um, so if you do have just a, a normal rectilinear lens um, uh, use that instead I only shot on this uh, this fisheye here because um, uh, one, so I could undistort it and see how that goes, and then two, because it was lighter for me just to carry the camera with one lens uh, to shoot my um, 360 by 180 degree panorama for an IBL, and then also shoot the video footage on the same lens rather than um, changing uh, lenses out in the field. Yeah, so um, that's about it. As you can see, if I go to uh, my, sorry, back to the motion tracking, um, the video footage I am using is a undistorted MOV, like uh, the file name underscore underscore the MOV. So I am, I am uh, tracking a separate file, um, not tracking within the same file that has been recently undistorted in Blender. Yeah, so there you go. Um, that kind of method would probably apply to a lot of different uh, uh, tracking applications like um, Synthize or uh, Autodesk Motion Tracker. Uh, so just under sort first, import, track, uh, CGI uh, as a separate layer, and then read a sort, uh, and then match it to your original video footage, and you should be cool. Oh, when you're redistorting, just use the uh, same like if you are uh, doing uh, using the undistortion node here, see how it says undistort. Um, you would just like leave. Uh, you'd use that and then just put it to distort to redistort your CGI to match the original video footage. Uh, yeah, so that's about it. I don't think there's anything else I should be talking about. Um, cool. Thanks.